Hi, my name is Eve Pierpont, and I'm the editor for Mixed Sounds Music Feature Section. I'm here today with Richard Patrick from Filter. Hi, Richard. Hello. Um, so how does it feel to release the algorithm after a seven-year hiatus? And we've got a couple more weeks to go. It comes out August 25th. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited for everybody to hear it, especially the fans that have been around for so long, for 30 years now. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. Um, so I've read that the album had a couple of possible titles, including They've Got Us Right Where They Want Us, At Each Other's Throats, um, which you described as being too long and divisive. So what made you settle on the title, The Algorithm? Um, the algorithm. Everybody has a math problem in their life. That ha That's what it's described as, a math uh, problem, a math uh, in the dictionary. That's what they call the algorithm. Everybody has an algorithm. Everybody has a thing that they have to, an obstacle that they have to get through. Um, and mine uh, originally was alcohol. Uh, I was an alcoholic for a long time. Still am. I'm in recovery. And, um, you know, that was a big algorithm in my life. So I, I'm, it's kind of a universal name that could apply to anything for everybody. That's awesome. I love that. And congratulations on uh, being in recovery. I know that's, mm -hmm. it's a feat. Definitely. It's a big one. It 90, yeah. 94% of us die of alcoholism. So I'm in the 6% of people that are that are alive and that are doing it and uh and i always say you can too um just give it a shot believe in yourself awesome that's definitely inspirational mm -hmm. um so you collaborated with some great artists to create obliteration um how was it to co-produce with brian virtue and co-write with sam tennis and duo uh ian scott and mark jackson Oh yeah, Mark Jackson and Ian Scott produced, uh, co-produced the song with me and Brian Virtue, uh, Obliteration. Sam Tenez did a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, he helped me with lyrics. He came up with, I think, the main chord progression. And um, he's he's an amazingly talented kid, Sam Tenez. I'm good friends with him. And uh, I look forward to working with him more in the future. And Mark and Ian were just amazing to work with. Plus, I worked with this kid named Zach Monowitz, who is this genius guitar player from Berkeley. And uh, he came up with two or three songs musically, uh, three songs on the record uh, for the beaten, um, Up Against the Wall, and uh say it again both of the all three of those songs he just sent me like musical parts that were like here's a verse here's a chorus here's a you know and i arranged them in, into an order that i i that i could sing over and um i just added lyrics and the melody and and the vocals in like an afternoon and boom the song was done then i had elias mullen come in and play drums on it and that was produced with uh, Brian Virtue as well. We did it at Stag Street, a little studio down in Burbank, uh, um, California. But yeah, I've, I I love collaborating with people, and I I would have to say that I I did have a heavy heavy hand because I was the producer of the record, the main producer of the record. But um, I. I I do love to work with other people and my friend Johnny Radke played guitar on it. He played guitar all over it. Um, Bobby Miller played bass um, on several tracks. So it, it it was a it was a collaborative effort, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to make. And the record kind of reminds me of where I was when I was twenty five when I was doing like title and amalgamate and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, it, it it has that vibe to it. Yeah, definitely. That's so fun. Um, so uh, at one point you were working on a record called Rebus, a follow up for Short Bus, and had written some songs for it with Brian Leesgang. Brian Leesgang. Brian. Yeah. Leesgang. Yep. Um. So how did the decision come along to include Summer Child and Command Z on the uh, on the algorithm songs that were originally for Rebus? Well, it was we had. 
Brian and I had come up with probably seven or eight tracks uh, and thoughts and prayers in America were kind of done. And I, as, as kind of a result to, to rebus, I, since the record wasn't going to come out, I just went ahead and released them as singles because I thought the fans deserved something from that era. And then when it came to summer child and command Z, I just was like, well, I got to use these songs, you know, they're, they're too good not to be heard. So I just included them on the algorithm and then, you know, it, rebus just kind of rebus died with the pledge music debacle that happened that crushed everybody and robbed, robbed, literally robbed my fans. And, um, uh, I, I, I um I just wanted to include as much of that record as I could on on the algorithm just because the the songs are so good. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm definitely glad that you did. Um <clears throat> so it's uh no secret a lot of rock bands and musicians have come out of Cleveland, Ohio and the surrounding areas. Um this is also the city that saw your reunion with 9 Inch Nails to perform Hey Man Nice Shot. What was the experience like for you? uh in cleveland yeah performing with them are you are you from cleveland um i am not from cleveland but i have um a boyfriend my boyfriend is from warren which is just outside of cleveland a little bit away um and uh i've spent a lot of time in cleveland yeah cleveland it's the home of rock and roll they have the rock and roll hall of fame and um i grew up there i lived there from 1977 to like 1996 when i when i left and um it's a beautiful town and the people are are chill you know they're they're cool people um and it was amazing we did short bus there a long time ago in 1994 95 uh, I lived in Rocky River, Ohio, which is just outside of Cleveland. And uh, yeah, it was fantastic. The Nine Inch Nails reunion was out of this world. It was absolutely the greatest time I ever had. It was literally, it's it's up there. It's like getting married, having babies, Playing playing shows with filter and of course it, right there Nine Inch Nails reunion is right there up there. It was amazing. Um, Trent was insanely uh, just generous. He had me sing Eraser, which I could barely do because I was crying so hard. Um, I I I the reception that I got when I walked out from the audience was so overwhelming that like I literally started tearing up and I could not find my pitch. So the first the first verse in in Eraser is pretty crazy sounding, um, but then I found my I found my voice when we started screaming the end of the song, and then we did I don't know we went into Wish and then gave up and Sin, and uh, Hey Man Nice Shot he literally had Nine Inch Nails rework the song hey man nice shot which is a filter song so he covered hey man nice shot and then he had me sing the second verse to head like a hole which is you know massive boots to fill and um it was really amazing it was it was it was one of the best moments of my life on stage for sure for for sure Oh, awesome. I'm sure I can only imagine. And yeah, no, I saw that you were from Cleveland and lived there. And yeah, I love that city. It's so, I don't know, it has a special, special feel to it. Um, yep. but, uh, sorry, what were you gonna say? It's a city that gets picked on a little bit, but it shouldn't. It's, no, it, it shouldn't. It's a, it's a great town. It's got it great is. people in it. Mm -hmm. the lake Erie is amazingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. I spent so much time on that lake with wave runners and out there in the water, boating and all that kind of stuff. It's it's a great place to grow up. I was I'm really proud I came from there. Yeah, you should be. I love it there so much. Um, so do you have any further plans to work with or perform with Trent uh, Reznor or Nine Inch Nails since this event took place? Um, I am completely, absolutely 
open to anything he would ever want to do. Uh, there's no question. I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, you know, even just to tour with them or something like that would be amazing just to go out with filters or something. Just, I don't even know, like it would be awesome to just be included in any respect. Um, but I am totally at the same time, I'm totally satisfied. That was an amazing moment. And, you know, if, if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's closure or something like that, like if that's the last time I ever get to be with Trent or whatever, you know, so be it. I'm totally satisfied and would never complain. You know what I mean? Like, um, but at the same time, I would totally do it again. Are you kidding? That was amazing. It was so much fun. Oh, no, I'm sure. That's yeah. awesome. I love the enthusiasm. Um, so in 1997, Spawn the Album was released with Can Shoot, Trip Like I Do as the opening song. Uh, which was a collaboration with the Crystal Method. Uh, what was the process like making that song? It was very easy. They gave me their CD, Las Vegas, and they said, pick a song out of there and see if you can't do something with it. And I heard Can't You Trip Like I Do? And I was like, well, I heard it's called, theirs version is called Trip Like I Do. And I was like, that's easy. Let's just do that. So I took the song, I chopped it up in a computer and I made it work as a song structurally for like singing for like vocals and then i played guitar over the what i thought was the chorus and then i made an outro and then i just sang as many ideas as i possibly could and then they all overlapped and there was this whole thing but uh, as soon as it was time you know as, as as it was arranged and everything the crystal method came back and we remixed it we mixed it with ben gross is the is the main mixer and it was a joy to make and um i love those guys and it was and scott and, and ken are amazing people and yeah it was a lot of fun awesome um so was there any talk about doing another song with the crystal method after the success of this collaboration um i don't know i think they they i don't even know if they still put records out um but there wasn't really that much talk of it you know i think we were both satisfied with with can't trip like i do and obviously you know um but i've, I've been collaborating out the wazoo with so many people lately i just did a track with horror that i'm working on with them i just did a track with health that were literally just finished in the last couple of days um i also worked with uh we are pigs i did a song called oshi with we are pigs and i'm forgetting i know i'm forgetting a few people but yeah i've been busting ass i've been working my my uh my butt off to uh to just be a part of so many other people's musical visions i love working and it's a lot of fun and it's easy to do when you have your own little studio like this and um you know you you have a dropbox account <laughs> oh yes definitely sounds like you've been working hard lately but that's that's great um so the algorithm has a couple songs where the uh, electronic elements seem to stand out a bit more like on for the beat in be careful um what you wish for and command z while i feel like the quiet parts of um, Command Z and even burn out the sun and body like a trance feel. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you decide uh, when and where to incorporate this? I, you know, what I do is I, I get like, I work on like probably 20 ideas. And if I don't feel the idea is awesome, I like, I just forget that I have it kind of thing. And then I whittle it down to like 10 or 11 songs and i always i always include a take a picture as i call it like a take a picture or you know goddamn me or uh, a more mellow song um as a part of the as a part of the record because i have that side to me i i i i don't wake up and just want to scream at the top of my lungs every single day i have like different moods and different emotions i want to convey you know to my fans and or to the audience and uh um so i i knew i was going to have some moments like that on the record i always kind of 
I envision a rock record as like, you know, it's like going to a party. It's like, you know, you, you're, you're headed in the car and you got some driving music and you're listening to some driving music when you get to the party. And then you get to the party and like you're hanging out and it's loud and there's a lot of action. And then like halfway through the party, someone like lights a joint and puts on some like, you know, more mellow music. And then by the end of the night, it's like fully ambient music. And like, you know, everyone's, the lights are dimmed down really low and people are starting to fall asleep or they're, or they're, or they're, they're headed out, they're going home. Like, and that's what I try and do. Like I upload the front of the record with just absolute, you know, destruction, like, you know, just complete bombast. And then as the record kind of goes on, it, it chills out. And by the end of the record, it's fully just ambient weirdness and um, or or just mellow or, or something. And um, the other part of the record was, is that I, I kind of envisioned an astronaut kind of coming back to Earth and um, he finds it completely destroyed except for a few people. Like there's a little girl or there's, you know, some other person that's on, you know, in, in on planet earth that that's somehow survived the apocalypse. And um, at the end of the whole record, he's kind of discovering like what happened and all the different things that blew it up. But by the end of the record, he's kind of like, fuck it. I'm just going to get wasted. And <laughs> And he, you know, that's why I just want to be high as a motherfucker. Just like that kind of sums up the whole human experience from from my perspective, because there's been so many times in my life where I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to get wasted. I don't even care. I'm just going to get drunk as hell. And, you know, uh, 25 year old me would have wrote those lyrics. And and that's why I, I wrote those lyrics. I haven't had a drink in 20 years but you know there's you know maybe it's carbicide or something maybe i'll buy a bunch of oreo cookies or something but there's always there's always a there's always a, a moment where i'm like fuck it there's nothing you can do about it might as well live and eat eat today because tomorrow who knows yes exactly no it's funny you say that my boyfriend is a um like recovering alcoholic and when he stopped drinking it was the full-on sugar like eating and he's a chef now but um yeah I was just going into the food but that's super interesting and that kind of leads into um another question I have about uh burn out the sun that it is more stripped down compared to the rest of the album and I did notice that on the majority if not all of filters albums there usually is one song like that towards the end um and what does that uh what does having that juxtaposition of sounds mean to you and how the decision come along to incorporate that yeah um I it, but if you want to expand on it anymore yeah no i just you know it's like i said before it's i i don't wake up every day you know with my distorted guitar you know on you know sometimes i find an acoustic guitar and i and i write on an acoustic and for Sam and I, it was just like, I'm just like, let's just do something mellow and weird. And um, so he he actually came up with a lot of the vocal melody, but I was I was kind of um, fully dedicated to the lyrics and um, the lyrics are really cool. I wish I had them in front of me because um, I'd recite them because I think they're amazing. Not to toot my own horn or anything. No, no, I completely agree. I wish I could have, like, I, I couldn't find lyrics online, but um, just because it's not out yet, obviously. But um, yeah, no, it was, I liked the lyrics too, from what I could pick uh, up from listening to it. I have them right here. It's, um, let me see if my computer opens it. Yeah, it's like, Oh, no, what time it is. I just got fine with it. Everything we talked about, it's all got to change. It needs a rearrange. I like talking to you, but I lose track of the time. My heart is still cold from the other line. My soul was provoked from a different crime. I know you'll find a way. I know you'll get away. But will you take me with you? I hope you take me with you. So that that's kind of like speaking to the needs of having a friend and like and like um you know trying to to bury the hatchet or or make something right 
and then oh no we're blind again we just lost sight of it everything that everything and all that we have ever done we need to see again we stop listening and that's on all of us this time our hearts are still sold from a simple time our wants are still old as we do or die i hope we find a way i hope we get away just a rescue from a lost lonely time that's all about like just finding some peace within this this chunk of time that we've been in you know the trump administration the 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 war in ukraine kim jong un trying to achieve nuclear weapons you know or or attaining nuclear weapons you know it's all just i really hope it works out because as a human it would suck if it didn't work out and you know um but yeah i i i'm proud of these songs i'm proud of these lyrics you know it's it's one thing to to grab a mic and just to scream and just to be in the raw emotion of heaviness and stuff like that but it's also i think it's also very challenging to show your soft underbelly and to be a little vulnerable and even even in singing burn out the sun it's in a key it's in a range that i'm not really you know uh used to it's in a lower range for me so i had to sing it really softly just to just to like uh, sing the song and um yeah it's just a special piece of music and i'm 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 really proud of it i can't wait to do the video for it um, we're in talks about that with the label, and I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Oh, I bet it will be. Um, yeah. So um, what's the word? What was I just thinking of? Oh, gosh. Sorry. Landline for the security. Like just some, some telemarketer was probably calling me. Um, no, the song really hits home. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. I liked it. And I love how you end in that kind of way for the albums. I think that's really special, truly. Um, cool. So yeah, I was especially drawn to Face Down as well. Um, it's lyrics and the music behind them. Uh, what was the inspiration behind it? Um, I bought a brand new, do you mean lyrically? I wonder what that is lyrically. Let me look at it. That's That's a pretty... I bought this new synthesizer called a Sequential Pro... Oh gosh, sorry, you just kind of froze. Um, I don't know what's going on. Mm. The heck? Do you want to? Do you want me to leave and then you can, and then I recontact you? Um, I think. Oh, no, it's back. It should be good now. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Sorry. You're just going to have to start over from what you said because it froze kind of after you said you got a new synthesizer. Right. So I, I bought this new synthesizer called a Sequential Pro 3 and I came up with this bass line that was just like, duh, 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 you know, just kind of this rolling bass line. And then I put some drums on it and then like like 15 minutes into it or maybe it well it felt like 15 minutes but probably a couple hours into it i was like i'm ready to sing on this thing and um without any guitar on it or anything um and then the lyrics were really fast and i i jotted down the first thing that popped into my head and it's i'm alive from telling the truth I'm alive because I don't lie to you. Watching all the hate go down, watching the mistakes go down. I'm alive because I tell the truth. Uh, you lift me. You left me here face down, spilling blood on the higher ground. You left me here face down, spilling blood on the higher ground, spilling blood on the higher ground. Something inspires the things I do. Something gives rise to the things I do watching all the hate go down watching the mistakes go down something inspires the things i do you left me here face down spilling blood on the higher ground um it's basically again humans get your shit together get your shit together like 
you're lying to each other. You're lying to yourselves. Misinformation abounds, you know, and and you're wrecking it. Like it's basically the the gist behind the song. And then I throw a shout out to the Beatles. I say, only love can see us through just like them Beatles say. Only love can see us through just like them Beatles say. You left me here face down spilling blood on the higher ground. Um, yeah, it was super fast. Like I wrote it really quickly and I think I recorded the first take. And you can even hear my voice crack a little bit on the on the on the bridge um, because I didn't care. I thought it sounded authentic. And uh, the song was done. And then I sent it to Johnny Radke and he had it for a couple of days and um, he put a bunch of guitar parts all over it. And then we had Elias Mullen come in and play drums on it at the very end before we mixed the record. And he did an amazing job, gave it that swing feel. And um, yeah, I'm proud of that song. I like the video too. It's fun. Yeah, no, I loved that that swing feel that you just mentioned. I think that's why I was so so the drunk. triplet the triplet it's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, so can you also tell me the meaning behind uh, thre uh, threshing floor? Threshing floor. Now that song I co-wrote with. Sam Tanez and this guy Seth mostly and let me see that one you got your hands around my neck white knuckles I'm not dead yet you try and choke my last breath but I'm a stubborn flame it's just about survival it's about um if I bow down I, if I cave I'm throwing dirt on top of my grave you got me you got your guillotine raised, my head's under your blade. Yeah, a lot of this was written by uh, Seth mostly and Sam Tanez, a lot of these lyrics. I think I added in. Sorry, what was the first name you said? It cut out for a second. Seth mostly S-E-T-H, oh, okay. Seth mostly and Sam Tanez really were, were bringing the lyrics on this one. Um, it's all about survival. It's all about, I, I don't want to give up. I don't want to surrender. I want to survive and make it. And that can be applicable to the, once again, you know, the astronaut comes back and he sees the planets in disarray and chaos and apocalyptic and, and he just wants to survive. Yeah, I love Love the theme um, of the album and you definitely have it well written throughout all the songs. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, what are you looking forward to most on your upcoming um, Freaks on Parade tour with Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, and Ministry? Oh, I just think we're gonna, the audience is gonna be amazing. The audience is gonna be huge and uh, it's been selling out everywhere. And um, obviously the hang is going to be amazing. I mean, you know, Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, Ministry, and all their bands. And we're all friends. We all know each other. So it's going to be like this cool hang and we're all going to have fun. And, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so with all the lineup changes uh, Filter has undergone, what has been a constant over the last 30 years? The constant? You're looking at him. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> um, it's weird because Filter, like, Filter started off, it was me with a computer and a tape deck and, like, my friend Brian Leesgang came in after I got signed and and worked with me and I wanted to include him. I was like, yeah, you're my buddy. You're my partner. Um, but then that kind of fell apart because he wanted to go off and do his own thing, which I completely understand because that's what I did with Nine Inch Nails. I, 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 I was in Nine Inch Nails until a point and then I just decided, hey, I want to try my own thing. And and that's what I did. And, um, you know, then I had Gino Leonardo and Frank and Steve Gillis um, come out with me on, on uh, Title of Record and um, The Amalgamate. And uh, the constant there was Ben Gross. The Ben Gross did Short Bus, Title of Record, 
and um amalgamate and he was a, he was an amazing producer who helped you know keep keep my because i was this is back when i was drinking so he would keep me focused on what i need needed to do um but i always had a real heavy hand in in like deciding whether or not something was deleted or something you know what i mean like if i heard an overdub that wasn't cool i would you know either work with gino on replacing it or or doing something or or using it but like i always had this like this delete button in in my in my arsenal because i figured if someone's going to be a tiebreaker it's got to be me you know because i'm i'm once again i was the only signed artist to to reprise you know or to my record company and then when i got sober a lot of the guys in filter didn't want to like kind of join me on that battle and i couldn't be around people that were still kind of using alcohol and it it was bad for me to be around people like that so i i just kind of threw up my hands and i joined the band army of anyone with the delio brothers and uh ray luzier did that for a record cycle it was a lot of fun had a great time working with those guys came back to filter in like 2008 and i had pretty much written a lot of i wrote almost 100 percent of anthems for the damned and um after anthems i worked with bob marlett for two with two records the trouble with angels and the sun comes out tonight also with johnny radke all over the sun comes out tonight johnny that's johnny's record essentially it's it's johnny bob and i wrote all the songs for the sun comes out tonight and then for crazy eyes i worked with this new kid named umi capello and umi was uh, a, a a totally different kind of vibe and um he he's a, a a great musician and we had a lot of fun working on that record and it kind of pulled me back into industrial um but after crazy eyes i made a decision that like i'm going to go buy a computer and i'm going to learn the software and i'm cuz i relied heavily on bob and umi as as people that ran the software and and kind of were driving as a, as a, in a studio setting there's the guy driving which means sitting behind the computer and operating the computer and that guy has a uh, whether they know it or not they have a lot of power and um i decided that i had to kind of take back that power especially for uh the algorithm and i just wanted to even when i was working with brian i was doing a lot of the heavy lifting and i think that's what kind of makes a filter record is when i'm really really super a part of the music side as well because it's it's got to sound like a filter record and and only i know what those things are sometimes like other people I, their styles get in, interwoven with me and it's it's almost it's almost like yeah i don't want filter isn't about other people's styles it's about what i did in those first three records the landmark reprise uh warner brothers records and so i kind of just forced myself to learn the computer and get back into really owning it and 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 being daring and 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 making decisions you know solely on whether or not i liked it or not yeah that's great i mean it's worked out really well that's awesome i like that stay true and just you know you do how you want to do it and it comes out amazing. So Thank you. That's, that's all that matters. Um, appreciate it. And then, yeah. So the algorithm will be released by Golden Robot Records. Uh, how, is, um, how has it like been working with them? They're great. I mean, we, we you know, they're a, a newer company and uh, we, you know, they're from Australia. So there's this time delay, <laughs> like they're, they're living in the future and we're like, you know, like, hey, what do you think about this, that, and the other, you know, so, uh, but uh, obviously uh, they're amazing. Australian people are fantastic. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of love. They, they're they super behind the record. They really love it. And it's just a matter of uh, connecting all the dots and making sure the, the release goes perfect. And, you know, thumbs up to Golden Robot. That's awesome. Um, well, that's all that I have, but it's really been a pleasure talking to you. So insightful. 
seem like such a down to earth person. It's really, I really enjoyed it. So thank you so much for your time. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the interest.